Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. Joining us today at the round table of dim lighting are Sam Gorski and Nico Perringer, the founding directors and visual effects masterminds behind the popular YouTube channel, Corridor Digital. Corridor Digital uh, delivers a unique and impressive style to the digital media space, producing high quality science fiction and video game inspired shorts, often on tight budgets. Mm -hmm. Uh, Their visual effects and their videos are some of the best on YouTube, yeah, that's right. I said it. Some of the best on YouTube. And in the past five years. Why don't years, you just say the best on YouTube, Link? Okay, I'll say it. They're the best on YouTube. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, we not, also had Freddie Wong on this show. Like, what, yeah. This is, is this going to become a, a Freddie W versus Corridor Digital? They're all friends and they're all great, guys. And, Come and, on. And collaborators. Yes, they are. Uh, but Corridor Digital is great. Let's just focus on them, yes. right? In the past five years, they've gained over three million subscribers and 300 million views. They're also helping to redefine sci-fi because they're bringing a lot of comedy to their videos, like Minecraft, The Last Minecart, which has over 30 million views, or Superman with a GoPro, which has over 16 million views. You can see these are more than just cool sci-fi videos. There's a lighthearted and comical tone beneath all of this stimulating visual effects, which really resonates with the internet audience. Another example is a video called uh, Superheroes versus Game Heroes uh, with over two million views uh, and climbing. Can you guess what that one's about? Uh, Superheroes versus video game heroes. That's what it's about. Oh, thanks for clarifying. Uh, So you got Thor facing off against uh, Steve from Minecraft, Uh, great video. Uh, I'd play a clip for you, but it's so much about the visual. You, You pretty much have to go to their channel to experience how talented these guys really are. And you should do that after you listen to this biscuit where we talked to Sam and Nico about how they met and bonded over Star Wars, what inspired that Superman with a GoPro video and how they get away with using drones in a lot of the videos they film. Uh, The new series they directed exclusively on Snapchat called Snapper Hero and how they deal with arguments, because we can learn something from this, on set by using a brilliant concept they invented called the wild card. Oh yeah, okay, so we'll get into all that. But first, uh, we wanna mention our sponsor, EF College Break. They make travel easy, affordable, and even more fun for anyone ages 18 to 28, college not required. Traveling around the world, you know this, it's one of the most exciting things you can do, especially when you're young before you get old and things begin to creak. That hasn't happened to, that hasn't happened to us yet. But your life gets busy and you're young, you should take advantage of that time, but you got to plan. And that's the most, you can get bogged down in those details of planning. You gotta spend hours on the internet searching for flights and hotels. You gotta figure out what to do, when to do it. You gotta figure out how to get between cities, get tickets for sites in advance, dealing with cancellations and closures and delays. You get the idea. I mean, to me, this is like the biggest source of anxiety around trips is questioning whether I've adequately planned. I mean. Right. I, before I go, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I I go to all these different websites. I try to figure it out, and I then just I get, pack underwear. Well, no, I get overwhelmed, and I don't I don't plan anything. I don't do anything. And then if I do plan something, then I'm like, what have I forgotten? And then I get there, and I'm like, what would I be doing if I knew what I should be doing? Like, <laughs> that's what am a I, bad place to be. What am I missing? And and if there's people with me. They're like, and I'm the guy who made the decision. Then You're it, a loser. I'm scrutinized constantly for the decisions I made. They hate you for the rest of their lives. Let EF College Break and their expert travelers take care of all this for you. Booking flights, lodging, transportation while you're there, site and event coordination. And here's the trump card. They provide you with a tour director who's a local expert, so you can blame that guy. (laughs) But there's nothing to blame because it's all gonna work out. They build group trips across six continents with everything from road tripping through Europe, cruising the islands of Thailand, taking a grand tour of Italy. Oh yes. I mean, you gotta go to the site. Uh, and not only will you have amazing experience in these new places all around the world, but you're gonna meet new people, make lifelong friends because that's how it works. You sign up, you don't even have to sign up with anybody else, you can sign up solo. But you know what, there's gonna be other people on the trip, you're gonna meet the love of your life. But that, that asterisk is, Rhett said that, they didn't say that, this is not a romance thing. <laughs> I just like to think of traveling around the world and you know falling in love, because that's how I met my wife on a, on a boat in Venice. Not, not true. Not true, I met her in Fuquay Verena. 
Uh, but let's it does, focus on the, the travel. Bottom not line, focus on romance. Bottom line is it doesn't have to be intimidating to plan a trip outside of the country, and EF College Break makes it possible. Okay, I'm on the site right now, and on top of the amazing trips they've already set up for this year, like Oktoberfest in Germany, they're already planning trips for next year as well. You should look into those. Here's one. A highlights of Australia's coast. Or how about an escapade through London and Scotland? How about it? The world is out there, people, and it's waiting to be explored, and you ain't even got to plan it. Head over to our special URL, efcollegebreak.com slash link, and we will hook you up with an extra $100 off your next adventure. That's right, $100 off, efcollegebreak.com slash link. Now, on to the biscuit. Let's step through uh, a few of your recent videos. Well, we'll start with a favorite one, which isn't quite as recent, but um, Superman with a GoPro. Um, oh yeah. So, I mean, this is this is amazing. It performed extremely well. Um, you've got Superman strapping on the GoPro on his head, and then taking you know you taking the what was it that was it had. It had your name on it. He had like a lost GoPro and he put it on his head and flew around with ah, it. And then yes. he, he took it off his head at the end and gave it back. And this was right right around the time yeah. when uh, you started seeing people use drones yeah. In, yeah. in their videos and you're like, who's gonna do the next cool thing? And you guys sort of took it up a few mm. notches. Yeah. So what's the genesis <clears throat> of the idea for you? And then we'll talk a little bit about the execution of it. Well, yeah. Brandon was, uh, for those of well, for those out there who are unaware, uh, the Freddie W channel used to be Freddie Wong and Brandon Lotch, and Brandon is still in the same building that we are. So we'll frequently work together and do stuff together. I mean, we run a gaming show together. Um, mm-hmm. But there was he he needed to shoot this short little video where he was like on the roof of our building and like Christmas presents were like shooting out of his butt or something like that. I can't quite remember the details. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyways, <laughs> he needed an aerial that shot. Was a, that, was a, that was pretty detailed. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember this. I'm picturing something like that. <laughs> I'm picturing Christmas presents coming out of Brandon's yeah. butt. That's as detailed as I want to get. It, I'm pretty sure it was something like that. Like, he flew away using, like, Christmas presents as his propulsion. Oh, okay, oh. yeah. Yeah, coming out of his butt. Um, so we were getting this aerial shot with the drone, and, it, you know, just treating it like a crane. You're just hovering it over the thing, you know, over Brandon. And... We were done. I'm like, cool. And I just, you know, cranked the throttle and decided to fly it around a little bit because we were out there. The sun was setting. It was pretty. And as I, like, floored it and, like, just started kind of having fun, like, the thought occurred to me, like, man, this is, you know, it's really cool. It's like you're flying. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> whatever. Like, it's not the biggest <laughs> revelation in the world. But the thing is, we're flying a GoPro on the on the, on the the drone at the time because uh, that's the camera that it carried. And so I got to kind of think, like, you know, GoPro is like, you know, sports footage. You wear the GoPro and you fly. I'm like, oh, you could maybe do something with, like, wearing a GoPro and flying. So that's kind of how it started. Um, and then from there, like we, like Sam and I were talking, coming up with different ideas. Uh, you know, do you just, somebody pops a GoPro on their head and they start flying. What else can you do? I guess you could green screen some arms in front and, you know, make it look a little more natural. Like you're actually, you know, filming with it. Um, you can do some visual effects and do transitions. Like somebody's running on the ground and they leap and then, you know, transitions to drone footage. And I think we did a test like that. Where we're just, running yeah. on the ground and just pretended to do a little hop and then transition to drone footage. And it worked flawlessly. Cause and that's just a, a cut, like a cut in the edit? Pretty, pretty much. much. There's no like I swish mean, panty? Or... Yeah, there's like a little bit of tweaking sometimes, you know, just to blend the shots. But just a little bit, but not too minimal, much. The thing is minimal. the GoPro is like, it's shaky. It has this natural shake. And that shake is perfect for like breaking your visual concentration for mm-hmm, like that brief mm-hmm. moment it takes. Yeah. So you just you just flew the drone in approximately the same place that you just shot that the guy with the GoPro on his head just like jumped. Yeah, jumped. Just, yeah. Exactly. Just matched up. Exactly. Approximated his height and then took yeah. off Yep. from there. Exactly. And so we were kind of working from there. Like, so we had a solid idea, you know, it's a really cool visual. Um, I wonder if you even still have that old video clip on our phones. Like you remember you posted it on Vimeo or something like that where Sam yeah. was just experimenting and we're showing to everybody just blowing their mind like this, you know, Sam just running and then something like jumping up in the air and, you know, flying up really high. Um, and then the next thing that we did was, you know, start thinking about like, how can we make this into a real video concept outside of just, I'm a dude flying. And when it comes to YouTube, it's thankfully this land of like loose IP management. <laughs> and yeah. we decided to pick a character that everybody's familiar with, which was Superman. Um, you know, cause Superman can fly and Superman with a GoPro sounds like a pretty interesting video that you'd want to watch, but it doesn't just quite end right there. Cause you could throw a GoPro on Superman's head. You can have him fly around. And that's neat, 
and it's cool and it's, you know, I'm sure some people would share it. But it's always nice to just get a little bit of that storyline in there, a little bit of that yeah. through line to like put that button on the package. And that's when Sam came up with the whole idea of like, oh, a lost GoPro, why don't I just get some sweet shots while I go deliver it to its its owner? Right, because why else would Superman be, you know, exactly. flying around with a GoPro? Exactly. Yeah. And then that that was the video. But like, can you fly much. a drone over Dodger Stadium legally? I don't or, know. We didn't actually shoot that shot. Um, <laughs> at the time, we were working with a, a friend, um, Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. What was his last name? Chin. Taylor Chin. Yeah. That guy's a, a total baller. He owns the site. Throwing called, him like, over under the bus. Oh, I said <laughs> over the bus. Over, <laughs> That's what Superman him, would do. Throwing him over the bus. But he, he owns this like site called like dronefly.com, and he like he's basically One of the he's a drone pilot sellers. and like this guy who he runs the site and um, basically we'd worked with him a few times in the past and um basically he does like training sessions for people and so a couple shots in that video were like him out in like training sessions and just filming crazy stuff and then he sends it back to us and we just put the green screen arms over it <laughs> um, right so like yeah. going over the uh observatory that kind of thing the observatory yeah. was us actually. oh it really was yeah that yeah, yeah i mean it's, it's a little bit of a mix here and there yeah the shots that taylor did uh that he did by himself was a dodger stadium because he's actually he was showing the drones to firefighters uh so they could use it to look at like burning buildings or mm-hmm. something like that or forest fires yeah because there's like a training facility out by Dodger Stadium. And so since he was right by there, like we wanted to get this, you know, some landmark shots. So he just went and got the stadium shot. Uh, he also did one where he was just like flying around, I think Sherman Oaks, which is like near the end when yeah. Superman's flying back to Sam's yeah, house. He, he basically did all the complicated shots in that piece. But um, it's pretty he loose pilot what's legal. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about this. It's well, well first, yeah. Like, We're trying to he, figure it out right now. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you put. Dr- I mean, you've got drone shots in everything. At everything this, at you this point. do. I mean, it's uh, this Superman video we did has been honestly one of like the most like the biggest videos we released. Not only because it was the fastest growing, but the way it's affected like our relationships uh, and networks between like other companies and interviews and just like all these like things and opportunities have actually come out of it, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Like, um, you know, last year and this year at NAB, we've like been doing like professional panels there. And, uh, we won this, like the New York city drone film festival with that, that video. And, um, and, uh, we just did an interview too with the, the wall street journal recently where this, this drone gray area came up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it. there's no clear, there's no actual definitive answer on anything right now. Because um, well, there weren't any rules to begin with. Like when we shot Superman with the GoPro, there was like no regulation. There's no rules. And then the FAA said, you know what? No commercial flying until we make rules. At which point everybody who was doing flying for video and film and real estate was like, mm, I'm going to keep doing it. They're like, right. my, invo- <laughs> my, stop me. my invoice now says graphic design instead of drone flying. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you, right. get, you get the sense, you know, even that shot, uh, especially because the stadium is empty at the time, mm. you get the, the sense that you're seeing something that you're not supposed to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, it, I think it. I, I think there's a story about this recently uh, and it just makes sense that this is going to start happening more and more. It's just you, you, okay. Hey, there's a celebrity that I'm a fan of. Uh, I can I know where they live. I'm just going to fly a drone into their backyard. Yeah, and go right into the open back door. I mean, like that's so it's so easy to do, mm-hmm. right? The yeah. problem is getting it back when they shut the back door. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we we'll just fly over the pool, you know. That's true, and you know I think that's to the credit of the community out there of drone pilots is that. You really haven't heard any horror stories yet. You haven't heard of anybody really getting too injured or of things like, you know, flying a drone into a celebrity's backyard or something like that or looking through the bedroom window. It um, only takes one. Yeah. <laughs> it does only Have take one. Have you seen one. that South Park episode, though? No. The, <sighs> the drone one? Mm. Okay. Well, it's just uh, what you mentioned there, flying it into a backyard and up to someone's window. It's, that's what the episode's about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, you, should, you, should, you should check it out. Because that's the first thing that you think about, I guess, when <laughs> yeah, you're... Right. I mean, Matt Stone, or if you're... <laughs> yeah. Trey Parker. Yeah. Well, um, let's talk about another one. Um, the ghillie suit man. I don't even know if that's how you say it. Yeah, that's but the right way. I didn't know... If you told me what a ghillie suit was, I mean, like, oh, I don't know, and I'm from North Carolina where there's plenty of hunters, but when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's a... It's the suit that like hunters wear. It's basically like a walking duck blind yeah. mm-hmm. for for hunting any and you blending in. And yep. Did you, you have like experience a, with that? Like a with one of those, or was it just like somebody had one? You're like, oh, well, we got to do something with uh, that. We 
decided to get one for that project specifically well, yeah we play a lot of video games and mm-hmm. if you play a lot of first person shooters you're pretty familiar with the concept of like a ghillie suit yeah. it's like the ultimate sniper camouflage the funny thing like that video is actually more of a it has more of a story with us to do as like a studio and growing as a production company because over the past year we've actually ran a patreon uh campaign yeah basically where you know it's crowdfunded uh crowdfunding for our videos and this is only for our videos that aren't sponsored so it lets us mm-hmm. you know get a little crazier and actually like you know pay our crew and that kind of stuff and we're just doing a you know simple video that's not you know not supported by anything other than ad revenue right um, so people pledge a monthly contribution one dollar ten dollars yeah. you can do monthly or you can do by video and so we actually do it by video okay and then in return we offer like rewards for those videos like we'll mm-hmm. actually at a certain tier we uh give people the, all the after effects files for our effects shots so they can actually huh. see how we did all our effects Mm-hmm. Um, but the ghillie suit video is actually for those who don't know uh, we have another like a, a third kind of a guy in quarter digital and his name is Jake Watson um, and he's our producer and he helps put together all the shoots and helps you know we're all trying to run the business and he helps with that as well and then we have another kind of team that's expanding we have Ren uh, Ren Weichman who runs the YouTube channel Ren the Reaper um, and he's done a lot of his own stuff that's really cool but he's kind of working with us full time now along with a couple other people here and there but the ghillie suit was actually Jake going out and wanting to put a piece together because, you know, Sam and I are getting to do all the fun stuff. Yeah. We're getting to direct and come up with all these ideas. So Jake's sitting there. He's like, oh, I kind of want to do some fun stuff. Yeah, too. we weren't actually on set for any of that, um, yeah. that oh, okay. video. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's actually been kind of this thing we, we're trying to figure out how to do these days because we have so many talented people we work with and there's only so many, you know, projects we can be involved with at one time. So it's basically the last few months in combination also with, you know, working with people on Patreon is is this opportunity for other people to come in and have their ideas made and they can direct and you know we still have that channel to to post things on and distribute. So so your Patreon mm-hmm. account you basically I mean as of looking today it's like right around 5 grand per video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you said to Jake, "Hey, all right, here's 5 grand, make that one." Pretty give much. Give or take. Pretty much. Like give or take, yeah. And to be fair, like when it comes to Patreon, the actual number of dollars you get is usually about 75% of what you actually see. Okay. Just because that's like what's pledged, but what people actually, what you actually get when you run credit cards when the time comes, <laughs> <laughs> right, it tends right, to be a little yeah. different. But yeah. Um. But yeah, so that was a chance for like, you know, for Jake to go out and actually hire a camera guy who's, you know, a friend that we've worked with a ton, but, you know, hire a guy who can come out and shoot it who's talented at that. Okay. Hire some talented yeah. actors, hire, you know. I get it. So, I mean, crew. it represents you guys growing from just being... Uh, a two man outfit, or I know you've been working and certainly collaborating with many people over the years, and and mm. have people that you work with that you hire, but taking that next step. But yeah, you know that it it still fits your the tone of your brand. Definitely, you know that is okay. You've got um, it's it's the brand is a mix of special effects and action and comedy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, you know, I've, I've found it interesting that that was, that was more, I mean, it had some special effects in it. You know, a guy got shot, <laughs> check, check the box, right? Yep. But it's, you know, it's much more of a comedic video. Mm-hmm. Um, but, th- but, there's a, but there's elements of comedy in pretty much, well, I wouldn't mm-hmm. say every single one, but most, most of the videos yeah. you do, that's yeah. a part of your, is that yeah. something that when you think about your brand, is it that defined that, uh, well, we're going to, we're yeah. going to take the comedic take on this or is that because it gets more views? How, how does... I mean, honestly, when it comes to making a video three minutes long uh, or four minutes long or five, I mean, making things funny, lighthearted is, I feel like, the key to success on online videos because, like, to really snap somebody into, like, a serious, like, you know, perspective when they're watching some, it. it it takes, I think, a little bit more like immersion uh, than online video can offer. Huh. Uh, you know, you're watching something on your phone. It's like, how quickly are you going to get like seriously emotionally invested in something that's very serious? Like, huh. it's it's harder to do that on a two three minute scale. Uh, so we we've kind of like tried to find that way to you know a- avoid. I guess avoid like accidentally like making something super serious and then uh it comes off really goofy and no one gets it and it's like you know. It's it, it's in the interest of keeping things fun and entertaining and not slowing things down too much. How'd you, how'd you discover that? Was it just an instinct? Uh, it's more of an instinct, I feel like. I mean, because, you know, it's like we love really cool, serious movies. And, like, David Fincher is one of my favorite directors. And most of his stuff is, like, you know, 90% 
serious. Right. But, um, you know, I feel like as YouTube creators um, and also our personalities, too, it's like when you're making video game inspired stuff, fun and entertaining aspects of that are like so important to getting it right. So, you know, it's interesting because yeah. it's I mean, that's that's quite an insight. I, mm-hmm. I think that. Uh, do you guys kind of see yourself or do you want to be guys who are kind of changing the landscape and the way people think about sci-fi or, or you know, it, it's w- putting more humor into that landscape and the way that you guys have kind of done it on the internet now moving into something that's, you know, longer form, but still yeah. carries that humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, definitely. <clears throat> excuse me. I think as people like as a younger generation that has grown up around cameras grows older and older, they start to see the process just a little bit more. And yeah. within that process is a certain sense of humor also. The more serious something gets, the easier it is to get a laugh out of somebody. You know, it's that whole like uh, comedic relief at the end of an yeah, yeah. you know, intense scene. So even just us going out and shooting something, like we have to remain aware and acknowledge when stuff is getting too overblown or too dramatic. And you can still have a dramatic moment. You can totally make it so people can enjoy that dramatic moment. But you have to also be able to acknowledge when you're getting ridiculous and mm. like when you're going over the top. Are you guys philosophical when it comes to these things? You certainly seem very thoughtful. Is it the type of thing that, I mean, you, you have a thoughtful approach to it. Uh, is it, does it define the type of conversations you have? I mean, yeah, I pretty mean, much. I'd say so. We, we try I to mean, like, we don't actually have that. I mean, we have enough experience from the last few years on YouTube and really getting our content out there before that we'd made videos together and, we just didn't really have that big of an audience to like discuss and get critiques from. But uh, after doing it on YouTube, like even though we haven't tried everything, we don't actually have experience, you know, like all around the board. But um, we certainly have at least like, you know, you have those you get those intuitions very quickly after you're doing stuff. And I'm sure you guys have that, too. It's like what works, what doesn't work, even if you haven't tried it or you you know, you you know, you can imagine it working out or not working mm-hmm. out, and it starts to just guide you. So yeah, yeah. it's like, just really that collection of experiences. Gut instinct gets you pretty far, but after you've been doing it for a couple of years, and you start to have a team of people that like are actually living off, you know, your, the production company, you you want to start stepping away from gut instincts and trying to define how things are working just a little bit more specifically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's yeah. go back to the beginning, the developing of those instincts. I when did you guys first meet? Uh, like junior high school yeah. it's about we we actually worked together on the video for the first time in ninth grade when we made a star wars fan film like about 14 years ago is that yeah. one on youtube uh, the star wars it's phantom not we're yet. uploading it <laughs> april 1st not yet <laughs> april 1st <laughs> okay. which is coming out it's gonna be have the best thumbnail i've ever seen <laughs> But it's going to be a 14-year-old. Okay, so... 14-year-old <laughs> like like a 14-year-old Sam. He's 14 so, years old, and we were 14 years old. So by the yeah. time this comes out, it will have been out, so people will be able to watch it. Yeah. Yes. So, so you speak freely. Yeah. And everyone past tense. All right. But is it... So is this an April Fool's prank? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's because it's going to be a... People are going to, you know, see our subscription feed, and they're going to see we upload this super sick half hour long star wars fan film <laughs> out of the blue and there's a behind the scenes to go with it so, so we're going to talk about the, the the i mean how you go from meeting to making a half hour star wars film well uh well that's what you know ninth grade you don't got a lot of things on your plate really so <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> that's that's really about all i can say i mean the phantom menace just came out yeah so i was like star wars is pretty cool again who, who had the camera no, i did sam did I had the camera same as a dad and mother. G- GL1. Had actually ran wow. like a online yeah, news business one. back in the day. And like yeah. Sam had all the swankiest gear. I, I thought they yeah. just started with G- the GL2. I didn't even know about the GL1. <laughs> the GL1 is such a nice camera. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. <laughs> so what kind of effects did you guys throw in there and how did you achieve those? Frame by frame. You know, in After Effects, so you can like animate things over like a few frames. We didn't. We weren't even doing that for our lasers and lightsabers. That was like it was frame by frame in Photoshop. Imagine drawing a line over your uh, thing <laughs> and like yeah, just like line after line after line. So I think yep. Sam did lightsabers for a month it straight. Was, no, it was even longer than that. It was, it was three three <laughs> and, months. And what was your uh, intention with the film at the time? Dude, be in Star Wars, be a part of it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and we did it. We but were. fourteen years <laughs> ago, where wh- who were you going to show it to? Best friends. <laughs> the internet i don't know um, like the school news broadcasting program or whatever dude george yeah. lucas I'm gonna go to george lucas <laughs> big hopes it's gonna be the best star wars fan film anybody's ever seen which it wasn't i think but. really in all seriousness like a total of probably about 
20 people have seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, not anymore. Yeah. Not by the time but you've talked yeah. about it is. because people yeah. like to talk I mean, about uh, it. But on the internet, though, it's going to be hundreds of I think thousands. deep yeah. down inside, like, part of me, like, I knew I wanted to do film, like, way back then. And so I think there's a part of me that's like, someday, someday when, like, I've made it, I'm going to put this out there and everybody's going to see it. So that day is, uh, whenever this comes out, minus however many days it is, April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you've made it. Is that what you're it. saying? I mean, it, it, because I think that's a, uh, uh, yeah. a lot of us as I, we struggle to I think you're def- right. define the genre and it's, you can always say there's that next thing I want to do as an artist or as a creator or I want to get that many more views or uh, subscribers or I want to make this type of film. It's hard to know, to take that moment, to take that breath and assess and say, you know that the dream that I had as a kid I, I'm actually living that now. Mm-hmm. All right, so you're saying you had that realization. Yeah. I actually had two benchmarks for when I had made it. Oh, wow. One was- Actual qualification. At Smart and well. Final, they had this large, like, extra huge pack of bacon. <laughs> 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 and I was like, when I buy that pack of bacon, I'll have made it. Well, I'll have made it part did, one. Did you buy it? Harley of Mornstein bought it when we did our collab with Epic Meal Time. <laughs> that exact, like- same branded pack. Was so it like, like a forty dollar thing of bacon? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's not like when a bearded belligerent Canadian buys me bacon. <laughs> that's not then the I would have made it. Sure, it, yeah, except it's, you see, like I made it because we were doing a collab with Epic Meal Time, one of the okay. biggest okay, channels right, at the time. So right. like, it was yeah. symbolic. It was, it was symbolic. Okay, it was yeah, symbolic okay. bacon. And the second one? Well, Star Wars, our Star Wars fan film, going up and confusing hopefully hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it finally yeah. seeing it finally having. Oh, wait, what's the name of the new an Star audience? Wars one? Then that spin-off Star Wars movie. That's oh, I know what uh, you're talking uh, about. Yeah. That's going to be the yeah. title of the one we released, <laughs> just by sheer coincidence. Just Did you guys have, I, I, I ask you this because, you know, we've known each other forever and, and had these ambitions and we would we would have these um, over-serious conversations about what we wanted to accomplish when we grew up. Did you guys have those kinds of conversations that you kind of look back and you're like, wow, we were we were dreaming. <laughs> Man. We were crazy. You know, I mean, honestly, the only conversation uh, that we kind of still have is like, all right, what is, like, when are we going to make that huge, big budget project? You know, whatever that form comes in. But, like, even in, like, back in high school, even, like, after this, st- after finishing the Star Wars, you know, project, you know, that was still the thing. It was like, man, I wonder when that's going to happen. How do you do that? Like, how does that even, like, come into existence? You know, and we're still, like, very close to hopefully figuring that out but like still that's that's that one little nagging one where it's like how do we make something like the stuff we saw up in that movie theater hmm. screen or on tv or wherever you know so like yeah i don't yeah, know we've always been pushing yeah. towards that do you that's guys it. do you guys have a, a moment or a, like a benchmark at which you consider mm-hmm. you made it well um the smart and final across the street <laughs> has yeah. uh like this huge thing of toilet paper <laughs> and it's so soft yeah, yeah, yeah. you wouldn't believe it's it could so barely fit black. it in the trunk no one's ever opened it do we do we have a a benchmark like that yeah. a bacon benchmark yeah, like a, a, yeah a bacon benchmark um i think it's it's uh, you know it's very much a you just kind of find yourself in this process and you're like, well, if I could, a year ago, if I had known we were gonna be doing this, I would have been very surprised, but now that we're doing it, I'm still thinking that this isn't that cool and mm-hmm. what are we gonna do a year from now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I kind of feel like that's just a, a constant mindset that anybody in this business who's ambitious and, and, and who has a goal, you know, because when you when you talk yeah. about that, that, that thing, you know, that really resonates with me that thing that seems, not that there's anything wrong or anything, we're not belittling YouTube and, and, and having an online audience and uh, you know, we could have, we never set out to achieve much with Good Mythical Morning and that's become like one of our main things, right, mm-hmm. in terms of audience. Not that those things are not important, but yeah, you always think, oh, but it still doesn't feel like I've done the thing that I respected in a certain way Yeah, mm-hmm. my entire life. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like in a weird way, like that will almost never happen. You'll never catch it. It's never gonna. You shouldn't yeah. catch it, right? Because if you yeah. the, mo- the moment you do, it's like, oh well, 
I'm just going to uh, kick back and die now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, at that point, it's, it's I don't know. Well, that, and the medium's always changing, you know, by the time. Right. Oh, yeah, that's. If we ever get to do a big budget film, which hopefully, you know, we're on track to do, like, it's going to be very different than what big budget films were back when we were watching them when we never, yeah, when he hadn't made videos, when he wanted to make videos. Yeah, Nicolas Cage, he's going to be out of the business. <laughs> going to be. Bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, which, you know, is a great segue into the snapper hero thing you guys are doing, which uh, kind of explain really quickly for people who might not know what, what that is. All right. So snapper hero is a series that is exclusively for Snapchat, not Snapchat, the company, but literally just we're putting it on Snapchat. Um, Story wise, it's no differently than any other half hour long series you might watch in places. But what's unique about it is that we are telling a story about a group of friends who discover they have superpowers through this this social medium, and uh, those, which is Snapchat. And those friends are YouTubers or Viners yeah, or Snapchatters. Exactly. Who exactly. you know in those mediums. Exactly. People who are already, you know, very natural on that platform. Because, now, we got to take yeah. one step back, though, and... I mean, we almost have to level set about what is Snapchat. What is Snapchat? <laughs> because, well, yeah. I mean, there's still... I mean, when is the first time that you personally got on Snapchat? And was it when you signed on to, to direct Snapper Hero? It, it, was about, yes. it was about a year. <laughs> for me, it was about a year ago. And I had okay. been using it. And Brandon was like, hey, Snapchat. And I'm like, what's Snapchat? And he's like, it's this weird thing people send dirty pictures with. And I'm like, all right. So <laughs> I, I, I got, <laughs> get me that. Yeah. So um, we, I, you know, I had been like messing around with it. And it was like, all right, you know, it's, it's like your stuff disappears on it. And I, I didn't really get into it too much. But um. What ended up developing? Your developing stuff dis- dif- disappears on it. Yeah, you send things and it's, uh, everything expires. It is a v- it is a video, and then what are the limitations of the video? Well, basically, it's so it started. I'm out, still not on it. If oh, I haven't okay, made that clear. Okay, okay, here. So it started out as just a messaging uh, app where your messages disappeared, and then text. eventually, yeah. text, text, and photo or video, everything's got an expiration timer on it. You can only see it for X amount of seconds. And you can set that. Yeah, and you can mm-hmm. set that. And so what they d- ended up uh, integrating after that was this thing called Your Story or the My Stories tab. So rather than just sending a video, let's say, from me to you, I can just post a video under my name and anyone who's friends with me can watch it. Uh-huh. It still expires, though, but only after about 24 hours and instead, how, of, instead of a few seconds. What's the length limit? And then about 10-second 10, 10 long videos is the max. But you can put um, as many 10 second long videos up. You can you chain them as long as you can put chain after chain after chain of 10 second long videos, but it's a 10 second long video maximum. And do they live uh, until a user accesses them and then they expire? No. Uh, well, or, the, 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 this, this, that's what's different about the stories is because the stories are alive for 24 hours after posting. For everyone. And you can watch them as many times as you want, unlike the direct versions. So, it's, you know, it's like the same equivalent of. Imagine like Twitter, each time you make a tweet, it's there for 24 hours and then disappears. And it's just like that, except for these little video clips. So interpersonally, uh, how would how do people use Snapchat? Like I was grilling Alex and Ben who work with us on our team because cause they use it. And I'm like, well, yeah, you hear the thing, well, well people send dirty pictures. <laughs> yeah. but, but I mean, it's, how did you use it interpersonally? Well, it's basically- And then w- Nico, when, you, when did you start using it? Well, well, here basically, it's 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 like a slower, more documentary version of Vine. Vine is like very like heavily edited because you have very little time. You know, it's like quick little mini scripted story, haha joke, punchline, the end. Snapchat is a little closer to. Um, it's still in that it's in that vein, but it's not it's not so like it's not so self contained because you can just keep stacking these clips after clips after clips and. You can make these as long as you want. So the, the stories and stuff you'll find on there are a little more about like immersion and seeing a location or seeing an experience but rather that's, than but, just telling a joke. But that's if you're an entertainer, if you're following an entertainer, if you're just interpersonally wanting to Snapchat with yeah. somebody, you just mm-hmm. want to see like, mm. um, like, I don't know, an orifice or something? Well, uh, it, it has yeah. a certain psychology about it. When your messages expire, like let's say, let's say you're texting. <laughs> Well, what's so funny? He said orifice. He just said, oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> oh, I didn't pick up. I th- wow. I was like, why do you say OFS? What's that? An, o- <laughs> no. an OFS, man. <laughs> oh, okay, so. uh, it's good for showing orifices. Um, Basically, it's also, well, so the psychology aspect real quick. So 
I said I text you and I want to text you a dumb picture, right? Well, I have to go to it, I have to save it, I have to send it. You get it, and then it saves and it clutters up your phone. Yeah. You know, it's like if I'm going to send you a picture and a text message, it better be a freaking good picture. Mm-hmm. You know, but Snapchat okay. is all about like, you know, don't sweat it. It can be a picture. Sorry, can I say? Yeah, it's can yeah. I say yeah. so it's just yeah. disposable. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to send you a casual picture. Whatever, who cares? And then like you're like, ha, that's mildly amusing. And I'm going to send you one back. And then it just facilitates this kind of re- really relaxed communication with media and it's over Mm -hmm. because then it's not like you're going through your text later and you're like i had this conversation with somebody Mm -hmm. it's like yeah Yeah. like who am i (laughs) yeah exactly it's more it's more (laughs) like that was boring or pointless or i don't know i'm not saying it was grotesque it was just (laughs) boring yeah it wasn't an orifice do something better with your life (laughs) or an ofs (laughs) (laughs) so you're not uh, i okay i get that so it's just well it's you know it's it it's just gone. It's like saying something and it's out there and then it goes away. Yeah, exactly. Unless exactly. it's extremely hurtful and then it stays in your psyche forever <laughs> and it changes who you are and yourself is your self yeah. worth. Yeah. So, do that. So how did you get involved in this in this project? Well, uh some people that have worked with us in the past uh knew the producer who was putting together the Snapchat thing and you know he was looking for somebody that could direct this really unique Progressive, really. Yeah. Experimental. I mean, we, experimental is the best way to put it. We shot. I wouldn't call it progressive just yet because I, I don't shot, know if it's really progressing anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> because we're we've spent our entire careers learning how to shoot like really cool widescreen shots with fancy lenses, and then we took this project and suddenly we were doing running around with our phones, <laughs> mm-hmm. doing selfies. Something which is usually I. Uh, I'm 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 very against doing usually. Demoralizing. I'm, I'm like I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Selfie. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. It's I think we shot more minutes of vertical video like consecutively than anybody else in history. <laughs> and that was That's really something to strange. be proud of. Well, yeah. and, you know, um, I, well we we well I'll go ahead and ask a question just because you're, you're talking about the selfie thing. I just assumed everybody was shooting themselves until I watched the behind the scenes and I see Harley shooting himself, but he's actually just holding your hand, Nico. Yeah. He, he was holding your wrist. You were pointing yeah. the phone at him and then he was holding your wrist and like. Exactly. There, yeah. Anytime there's a tricky shot where we need specific angles and framing, usually our hand is there actually holding the phone. Okay. So and that they're, wasn't. They're, just, they're hovering. Yeah. That wasn't the, the entire process. No, no. no. Like the, Harley knows but, how to shoot see, a selfie. See, and, or just for Harley. Yeah. It, <laughs> but, and this goes back to the whole cast thing, you know, making it's very comforting sure that, when he holds my wrist. But yeah, making sure, you know, it's not just like we're not just working with actors we're working with people who are like who know this kind of platform yeah. and this kind of media because it's like all right uh you're the cameraman harley and here's the phone and we're gonna step back and just go film the scene <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah it was so, uh, really cool but what's the story and how did you incorporate audience feedback in real time into the actual story well, well the audience feedback came first actually where they the snapper hero community like the whole team running that kind of put together this whole thing of like here's who our actors are going to be does anybody have any power suggestions does anybody and have go any, like, through who those are so that's harley that's anna who we talked to recently yep. uh mm-hmm. just rain uh simone shepherd and sean duras and we got okay. freddie up in there too and freddie wong yeah mm-hmm. there's a touch of clinton jones and so they <laughs> they snapchatted out I'm doing this thing. Tell me what my superpower should be in my as a character exactly. or as myself in Snapper Hero. Yeah, or what does my what should my costume be, etc. And so we worked with with that. It was it was a mix. Like there, we had our own ideas with what we wanted for certain powers and certain things. But a lot of what the fans came back with like meshed perfectly with the story. And so we were able to kind of put it all together into yeah. this cohesive. But the piece. psychology of it that you explained. It it runs contrary to everything I feel as an artist. If you, if I'm going to put work and time and energy into something, I don't want it to be gone in 24 hours. It, <laughs> the first part is gone yeah, before the the next part comes out. <laughs> yep. So it's it's interesting. How did you did you grapple with that? Because a little bit, but you know the thing is when you're watching. Let's say you're chilling on YouTube, right? Because it's your lunch break or whatever, and you pull up the vid- you know you're looking at your sub feed, and it's like that yeah, could be a cool video. I'll watch it later, and then you never watch it. It adds value, yeah. yeah. That, it's it, it it to me it, it, it provides makes me think I gotta get in on this because exactly. it has a certain shelf life. Yeah, yep. and There's I'll be honest, like, need to watch it. Like 
you it's not the series like we have like recaps on each episode and, and it is designed i mean people aren't going to see every single clip in every single episode so the series isn't necessarily designed to be like oh you missed it too bad you're screwed you're this next episode is going to make no sense and mm-hmm. you're going to hate it you know so it is designed to have people be able to pick it up and we actually saw the the numbers of the the third episode we released were higher than the first one so like more people came in to watch that third episode than you know and, and you designed and, yeah. it so that would work yeah pretty much hopefully <laughs> there's no comment well, section to read to see if it is working <laughs> yeah but there <laughs> so, is uh, right. the yeah. biggest thing actually we can get uh we can see like screenshots and how many people are like saving frames in the uh in the series uh-huh. to, to help give a reference of like what people are like so you don't even like... get a sense of how many people watched it we oh, do we, no, we, we have do. numbers yeah. so you get you get that raw number mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and, but and, and when is it done when is its run? The last one comes out on like April like seventh or so. The so last, the last episode. So this yeah. conversation could it you know people listening to this right now mm-hmm. in in our future they're mm-hmm. present. Yeah, it's already gone. They can't even watch it. <laughs> like we're talking about something that they've missed. Yeah. Well, I'm sure somebody isn't that put, a problem. Put it, put it on YouTube. Well, here's the thing. We have we have ideas on how to fix that. Uh, you know. As video video guys, <laughs> you know, by the time this has happened, there might be another home for it, but we'll see. Who knows? But I mean, the thing at the end of the day, watching it on a phone is the way it was designed. Yeah, you know, right. And even like, if it is on another platform, you got to watch it. And that was phone. the weirdest thing, you know, shooting a project vertically on phones and everything. And it's like you watch it on a computer screen, you're like, this sucks. And then you watch it on your phone, and you're like, oh my god, I feel like I'm filming this. Like mm-hmm. you feel, it feels like footage that you've just shot or it's like it's actually happening it's amazing when you're holding what, it in your hand i mean you couldn't even list on the front end of, a, of this project the things that you think you would learn that's yeah. that's what's yeah. so uh pioneering about it and what's so exciting about it um yeah how that, was that's amazing how was at&t involved so basically it, they they uh they funded the project they the were like thing. uh and i think it's kind of funny because i was like man you know, like all they're all they're getting and all they're asking for is pretty much, you know, they, they want to have like, you know, the thanks to AT&T, you know, because this is, you know, it's sponsored by them. And I'm trying to think like, you know, like what do companies get out of funding projects like this? Because I know what I'm getting out of this. I'm getting an amazing opportunity as a filmmaker. You know, mm-hmm. it's like this mm-hmm. is obvious. Like I'm happy to do it. But um, but yeah, it's like, you know, I can see I can see why they want to do this stuff because, you know, it's like Snapchat is a new platform. You know, it's on their devices, et cetera. And. It's like this cool way for us to make content and them to like, you know, it's like people using like AT and T services, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it wasn't necessarily. I mean, because AT and T, I guess, is it, it's just a provider. It doesn't have its own yeah. phone, really. Well, they right? actually I mean, have kind of had this relationship with Samsung, where they there's like an AT and T version of the Galaxy Note Four, which you'll see a lot of the characters using in the piece, yeah. but not everybody. We or, don't show any other phones. Okay, yeah, you don't yeah. show any other phones. Gotcha. But but yeah, but all in all though, like um, I'm really happy with the way it worked because they, you know, they were not involved with like create, creative or anything yeah. like that. Maybe it's right. said TV TV 14. It's, yeah, it's like TV 14, and we're like, that's about it. We got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> the interesting yeah. thing about it, like I'm, I'm I'm still processing all this Snapchat, this uh, Snapper Hero specifically. You know, you think about the appointment viewing it's it's giving an, a new generation the sensation of what television yes. used to be like yes. exactly yes that was- <laughs> you could if you missed if you if, if you didn't make the appointment if you weren't sitting in, on your couch watching it when it came on you missed it. yep mm-hmm. unless they decide to put it back on mm-hmm. so it's this it's like this retro kind of yeah. sensation of that adds value to it. Yeah, I'm not sure how how effective it is still yet. Um, but I I I, I haven't because I haven't seen like the positive aspects of that. We won't. We only hear the negative aspects. Like, why are you putting on Snapchat? I I don't have Snapchat. I don't want to sign up for just to watch this dumb show. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like secretly they're like, I wish I could see it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, isn't Snapchat free? It yeah, is. but you know, not everybody has a smartphone. Okay. Yeah. Which I've had. Forgotten or about. maybe they're not <laughs> allowed to download. Uh, I mean, there's the, so many things. There's so many uh, things, you know. But at the end of the day, it kind of shows you, like, you know, also why I guess we have chosen YouTube. It's so ubiquitous, and like, it's such. That's why it's been the best place for us to post most of our, you know, content. It's just because everyone can watch videos on YouTube. Right. Well, everyone. has has doing this project led you to think, uh, 
we as a brand, Cordor Digital, need to get in on this Snapchat game game more directly, or is it just this was a cool project? Maybe we'll do something else like this. But yep, uh, I think it's, it's mostly the latter. Okay. Actually, it was more for me. It was more revelation that we should get on the Instagram game. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, because the thing is, like you know, it's this is like ease of communication. And it's this like posting of small minor pictures and videos. Like when we make a quarter digital video, like we craft the heck out of that video. Yeah. Like, you know, that's a ton of work goes in that video. So what about those little simple videos and those dumb little pictures and those little funny moments that we have? Like, where do those go? And sometimes they go on our Sam and Nico channel, but they're not always right for that. Yeah. We we're just talking about that the other day. I was like, Oh, this would be a funny video idea. And I'm like, I think that's a better Instagram video. Uh, what's the dynamic between the two of you? Um, how often do you uh, argue? Like, how do you? What? What's the? Depends on how much preparation we've done beforehand when we shoot. Like, if we're winging it, we'll argue a fair amount. And but what does that look like? Like, kind of like siblings. It's like arguing. it's it's like this is a good <laughs> shot, and then someone's like, "No, this is a better shot," and I'm like, "I'm not moving on until I get my shot." <laughs> it's like, and no, we are, don't have time to get are your the vo- shot. Are the voices raising? Yeah, it's imagine gr- imagine uh, this like. Sometimes, three or four times louder. Are you, gra- <laughs> are you grabbing each other? Like no, Sam's there's number there's one no, rule. Sam is the number one rule. My, I'm, I have one rule, and it's under no circumstances is anyone allowed to touch me <laughs> <laughs> while on set. But uh, <laughs> no, period <laughs> in life. No, um, in, in all seriousness, no. No, no, but hold on. There's no physical. Was that just? A, is that a running joke? Or That's is just that a true? Run, I just say that to because people because it the... freaks them out, and then I get a laugh a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're like, like comfortable laugh. Like, hold on, I think I've already touched you. I'm sorry. Oh, oh my, it means when I need to get Sam's attention, I put my hand on his shoulder, and he goes. What is my number one rule? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's when we when we argue, it's it's a very like film centric argument. Like you need to consider this character's beat in this next scene. We need to have this, and you're not getting this shot. Well, but I'm getting this shot for this reason instead. So you're not yeah. caring enough about the film. <laughs> so the the arguments are very like moment centric, and we'll figure it out, and then it's done. It's like they're not personal arguments. They're like very quick, heated. Like we got to figure this out because we don't have a lot of time. And like we figure it out, we get it, and we move on. And that's when we haven't prepared. When we have prepared and we've gone over the shots together, there's zero arguments on set. Right. So, But when you have those, is it the people standing around like slowly backing away? No, like, no. Like sometimes no. Rhett and I will argue and I'll notice, like I'll glance over his shoulder mm-hmm. when I'm like just like shaking yeah. with anger <laughs> and I'll realize that there's people who are quaking it's like, yeah. or just like, I think when we've, this is awkward. Yeah. When we were every younger once in a while, and less experienced. Yeah. You get, you get that vibe every once in a while, but it's, yeah. We've learned to notice it because at the end of the day, like all these arguments are for the sake of the piece. Yeah. And if the argument is making the crew or the actors lose their focus, then you're starting to hurt the piece. Yeah. And mm-hmm. in the past, we sometimes we'd get, you know, maybe a little too carried away or lose that focus. But at this point, we're much more on top of that now. Yeah. Like, it's okay to have an argument. It's okay to be we, passionate we, about that, what you're doing. That's the thing. Actually, we, we haven't stopped arguing any more or less. It's the same as about, you know, a few years ago. But uh, the only difference now is that it's much quieter and no one knows when it's happening. <laughs> it's like, hey, hey Nico, here's an idea. And I'm like, you better get that dang shot right now or I'm not leaving the set. <laughs> and, then it, and he's like, no, sh- you shut up. <laughs> and then, then we go back out there and like, all right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not, it's not quite that dark, but that's, you know, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's like when you, when you, when you disagree, you don't want to go like, what are you doing? Like I'm disagreeing. It's like, everyone's like, wait, who's, if there's two directors here and they can't agree, then yeah, who right. am I supposed to listen to? Like, yeah. Oh no. It's like, that's the last thing you want to have happen. It's just, spread that confusion out there so like we have to contain it between ourselves is there a division of labor maybe not on set but over the course of corridor digital like how do you guys divide and conquer well i think real quick before we move on before we divide and conquer we should tell you about our wild cards tell us about the wild cards Uh, we still don't have them printed i'm gonna go print them printed i'm gonna print them right now we just have the hand signal where it's like Oh style so when you you (laughs) see this on set that means it's a wild card. So, so you, you, you like look listening. like a boy, like the Boy Scout symbol. Imagine, yeah. the, Two imagine, fingers. imagine you're holding an ace between your fingers. Right, right. You're you're just, your you're just like, right. Okay. Yeah. So when we're in an argument, and we we each have one wild card per shoot, I think per day of shooting. Per day of shooting. <laughs> when you're in an argument, if you want to settle that argument immediately. You whip out your wild card. I'm playing my wild card. Oh, and person has to go like, oh, oh and they fall back. This yeah, is they have to they have to they have to raise their hands and, and back yeah. away and like oh it's like it's like out. There is one more rule to the wild cards. 
you can cancel a wild card with your wild card. <laughs> <laughs> but you've yeah. used it. That's it. Guys, we're taking this idea. <laughs> Go for it. But hold on. We'll when you cancel the other wild card, then how do you decide? Then you're still back in the argument and no one can ever make an executive decision after that point. And how is, often does that happen? We have never canceled out a wild card. Well, hold on. I think the, the way it works is is if you play your wild card, Nico, mm -hmm. and then Sam plays it back, Sam wins. He just oh, that's it. it. Is that how it Because works? you made the decision to break it out first, so you run the risk of either getting the, your mm. your way or he ooh, can override it. Ooh, oh, that's it's, the way it's to work. Like the prisoner's like dilemma that. thing, like a little bit. <laughs> that seems to like, make perfect sense to me. By whipping out sense. your wild card, you might risk losing it and not getting your way. But then, right? Whoa! No, that's that's too mm. that's too deep. That's good though. It's I perfect. Like it. It's just just <laughs> deep enough. But the wild card, I mean, it has a certain element of respect. It's interesting that you've never double wild carded, though. I will say that. So you're pointing out a problem that's not a problem for them yet. Well, if me and you both have wild cards, it'll be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll print our run of them and we'll, we'll send you guys okay. two wild cards. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you got to call it something else. You'll be surprised. When that wild card comes out, mm. people gasp. Like, <gasps> Yeah. Even, even, even though you can't see it, even though it's an invisible card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and usually one person goes, like, oh, and like runs off set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing it's is, if, thing, if things get that heated for us, like I would, I'm like, you know, we'll get so heated in something, like the motion of pulling out a fake card <laughs> is, is a total departure from the tone of the moment. Exactly. Oh, that's, like, that's what I like about it. I'm, it it's like, it's a breaking character. You have like, to do it very now anime I, style. Now I am. Uh, I am a, a mime. <laughs> I was really angry a second ago, but now I'm a French mime. <laughs> but yeah. I, I think the, I think one of the reasons that the wild card uh, wouldn't always work for us is a lot. A lot of times, it's not just about two opposing opinions. It's it's like the way that something was said. It is personal. Mm. It gets personal, mm. and, and then wild cards don't help when it gets personal. Right. And and Link makes it personal more than I do. I'll own that. <laughs> But so you so you need like a oh. you need like a uh, you need to hold up like a loofah that needs to be oh, your, man. Oh, your, your, wow <laughs> wow <laughs> well if it gets personal Why don't I hold up scissors and cut your balls off <laughs> <laughs> All right. there we go or you can get the wild cards yeah I do like the wild card idea All yeah right. I mean I'm, I'm good what I'm gonna do is I think we're gonna make a run of wild cards and we're gonna send them to every duo YouTube channel out there I think that's a good idea so uh, I I would yeah. just. I'd like to caucus on what you call them because it's just wild card art exists. It's got to be something like the decision maker. Or the, like, mm -hmm. the, but the wild card's like, who knows what it could be? Yeah, that's yeah. who knows what's going to happen next. Yeah, it's, it's, it's but like, you do it's know short, it's going it's it's to be his way. But no one. <laughs> oh, but what if I whip but what it out? Is my way? What, what if, is I, my what way? if I whipped out the wild card and I haven't even said what I'm about to do with it? Yeah. And it's like anything could happen and we have to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not, who, who are we to change what's working fabulously? But dude, I do want to. Pizza I'd for love, lunch. I want to cut anything. You, yeah, that's true, actually. Do, do we give Jacob a wild card? Does the producer get a wild no. card? Yeah. No. Yeah? No, I he's. No, I'm, I'm he's, with Red on this. I, don't, I think only the two directors get wild cards. Yeah, right. Yeah, it gets too complicated. You get three. Because then how do you do the, the three thing doesn't work? It's, it's, it's no. going to. No. Yeah. Now, okay. But speaking of. Uh, just you know, you guys being a duo, I think a, a decision, whether it's a, an explicitly made decision or if it's just implicit in your relationship and your career, are you guys committed to be a creative duo indefinitely, or is it just like, ah, you know what? I think we've got our solo things that we want to do, and I think it's not like I've talked said Nico. It'd mean a lot to me if we made movies forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've never had that conversation. Yeah, actually. I mean, I mean, it's just uh, we we take different roles on different projects. Sometimes I'm like, hey, I'm gonna make a video, and I go direct it, and Nico helps me shoot it, and gener or vice versa. So it's like there's a little back and forth. There's some things we collaborate on, and some things that some of us take the lead on. But yeah, yeah, I think when it comes to you know a creative duo, you're working with the other person because a you like their style, b you kind of just creatively work on the same wavelength. And C, usually they're very talented. So for me to not work with Sam, it'd have to be a very specific type of project where either Sam's off doing something else and I, you know, I just don't have, you know, the time or the resources to bring him on board. Or it'd be such a creative departure that he wouldn't be able to help me with it, which would mean I'd, you know, we do action, we do sci-fi, we do comedy. We like everything we do is something that Sam is good at and generally vice versa for me. So it had to be a huge departure. And 
that's fine. Like, if you want to go off and explore something creatively, like, go for it. But other than that, if there's somebody out there who I'd want to have them help me on the project, it'd be Sam, you know? So that's just how I work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's sort of a, it's just kind of intrinsic to the, the way you guys work. Yeah. I mean, it takes a long time to learn to work with somebody well creatively and really develop certain types of skills. And with our, filmmaking on youtube we're going for this very cinematic look but without the budget that cinema stuff usually has so that requires having a team of people who are very uniquely trained i guess into doing that and so sam is very uniquely trained into doing that as am i so i can't just go out and find somebody else who can do that you know that sam's the closest i've you know the closest one to that that i've found and we've worked together and we've grown those skills Mm -hmm. together so you know it's a very much like on top of everything else it's also a matter of practicality Mm -hmm. like for me to go out and shoot a project without Sam would require a much larger budget because I'm getting, you know, four people, five people to fill the role that Sam fills in a set because he does the job of like four to five people. And yeah, like I said, it also needed to just be a departure from the stuff that we'd usually do because otherwise I would just naturally work with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like to think of it as like a, to, you know, I've got an analogy for this. Like a, you're rolling a big ball on a flat surface that is slowly gathering momentum and gathering mass. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it, gain, it gains its own momentum as you work longer and longer together, but it also becomes harder to manage and to keep pushing. And it's mm-hmm. like, you get to this point where you're like, I, I couldn't, I, we couldn't do this, al- neither of us could do this alone. Yeah. So you, you're so committed to this thing moving forward that there's just not really in the conversation to not keep moving it forward exactly. together. That's pretty much it, yeah. It's kind of like, well, I don't know, I guess I'll just go make some art films <laughs> alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like the only other option right now. <laughs> well, pushing the pushing the the ball, uh, that's, that's okay. I'll I'll reflect on that. But you you know as you guys that's are a good, good analogy. You <laughs> got, yeah. But you guys are pretty good teachers. I, you know, there's lots lots to think about here. The wild card being uh, chief among them. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I have to say as as we close down here, I, I learned something the first time I talked to you guys, and that it's. You spoke English. Um, when I first saw your videos, I, I don't know what video it was. I thought that you, I, you guys were like French or something. Oh, uh, it must have been one of those ones, like graphic violence or something like that. Where there's no like talking. Where there's no dialogue. No talking, yeah. and it was like, I think these guys are like... Some guys from like Eastern Europe and like you, Romania. You it's like the Freddie and Brandon of like, like uh, freaking Ukraine Germany or Scandinavia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 right. It doesn't help totally. that if like for a year, YouTube would default turn on Chinese subtitles on all our videos. Just like anytime <laughs> yeah. I'd just go to a computer that like was just a computer I'd never touched before and like go to our channel, like freaking Chinese subtitles. Yeah, would it's come like up. you couldn't change like what it was by default. And <laughs> That's be, crazy. We, we'd have fans like crowdsource subtitles for us and it'd be like. For some reason, it always picks some random one. It's like, why can't it just default to like nothing? But am I the, am I the first person to say, oh, you, you guys no, speak English? No, that's English. That's really funny. No, you, but, but it makes you're the first person I've heard say that. You've makes, heard somebody else say it, that? No, I haven't. But oh. I'm, what I'm saying, it makes total sense. That, <laughs> like that makes so much sense, though. Yeah. Oh, they speak English. Wow. Yeah, I think the oh. first time I met you guys, I was just wowed by the fact that you're both very tall. <laughs> In fact. Both you guys and the Epic Mealtime crew are very tall people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up with that? Yeah, they're, they're tall Sorry and about that. and big. They're just yeah. they're, they're they could crush you. Well, mm. they eat a lot of meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, guys. Uh, why don't you sign the table? We appreciate the time. This oh, is very yeah. cool. There it was, an ear biscuit with Corridor Digital. Of course. Wild card. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, well, first I wanna ask you guys to give them feedback. What did you think about our conversation? Uh, use hashtag ear biscuits and tweet at them. That's at Corridor Digital to talk to Sam and Nico. Let them know what you thought, guys. You can also let us know what you thought about uh, this ear biscuit on iTunes by leaving a review and a rating. We appreciate that, it goes a long way. You can also join in on the conversation on SoundCloud. So they said that they are going to literally print off these cards and when they do, they said we'll get a copy. Yeah. And I'm pretty pretty excited about it. Because I, you know, our technique thus far has been to just you know, we don't we don't make a scene out of arguing with each other on set, but sometimes, sometimes it will get into a protracted conversation that has to like go into a corner, and, and it, the voices raise and the facial expressions get really intense. It's just a creative process, people. When you've got two strong opinions that both may be right, 
But only one can be right. Uh, and mine can be more right. And that's just what happens. But this, <laughs> this wild card concept, I think they should just write a book about that. Really? Yeah. They could print it on the card if it was a short enough <laughs> They could book. just make it a brochure. That's yeah, just, they, a, a, just put instructions on the a card. A non-foldable pamphlet. Well, why sell a book when you can just sell the card that to go And use? it could be on one of those uh, rotating things that postcards are on it, like uh, you know, travel shops. Souvenir shops, the wild card. Now that we should get money for that, though. We just came up with that. If they do that, we get twenty percent. You guys listening? You hear that? I just want the card, and I I want to use it. I think I would. Well, and it's you can use it once on a shoot or once on a shoot every day. I can't remember. Uh, I think you get it for the day. You get it for the day. Every day. Every day. I just I always enjoy talking to another. I would use mine for lunch. Didn't we? Isn't that what we said? We were just. In, I would just. I oh, get to when, decide. when, oh, where to go to where eat lunch? Where we go for lunch, yeah. I, I would end up blowing it on that every day. I just like talking to a, another creative duo because it's so interesting to see how, you know, the mechanics of it because it's the it's the key to what we've created, obviously, the fact that there's two of us and that we bring things to the table and we bat ideas around and everybody's personality is different. It's interesting the, the way that they, they talked about it and they were, they kind of, you got the impression that Oh, these guys don't argue a whole lot. I, I don't think, think these guys argue as much as we do. And then all of a sudden they bring out the wild card. Mm -hmm. And that was a wild card for me because I was like, well, maybe that's what we need, Link. We need a wild card. But I think I, it should be a flag. Well, I don't think it should be called wild because it's pretty predictable. I mean, once you know what it does. You think it should be a hand signal? What if it's just the bird? <laughs> well, that's kind of rude, right? <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. And, Next time uh, I flip the bird, I flip you the bird on set. It means I get my way. That, that's not going to work. I'd be well. playing the car right now, just asking <laughs> you to move on. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, you can count on us. We'll be here next week coming into your ear holes. 